Sophonisba Anguissola, was born in 1530 to a noble family in Cremona. Her first star study started when she was 15. And here we have the crucifixion by Bernardino Gatti, who in 1545 she did her first studies with. He was an Italian painter during the Renaissance, and later, four years later, in 1549, she worked with him again. And she was taught and was influenced by her teacher, Bernardino Campi, as well as inspired by Caraggio, who was an influential painter during that time period. And here we can see a portrait by Campi, her teacher, and you can see later in Sofonisba's paintings that she was very inspired by him as their styles are very similar. And this is a painting that Sofonisba did of her teacher painting a portrait of her. And you can tell by looking at this painting that they had a good relationship and that she looked up to her teacher a lot. Campi was an outstanding portrait painter, and it is evident in Sofonisba's paintings that she was taught well under him. And you might be asking, why is it important to learn about Sofonisba and Guisola? How come in the last 30 years she has aroused interest from the public and specialists as well? Sofonisba was a very talented artist who is especially admired for her portraits. She did many self-portraits where she painted herself playing musical instruments. Here we can see a painting of her playing the piano, of her reading, as well as her painting. Like her self-portraits, she would depict her models doing everyday activities. She made an effort to paint them with objects that well described their different personalities. She painted with a psychological focus on her subject. Her style is soft. She used light, subtle brush strokes that she then blurs by delicately rubbing the paint with her finger. When she was 29, she was invited to Philip II's court in Madrid. She moved to Madrid where she painted portraits and became a lady-in-waiting to Philip II's wife, Queen Elizabeth of Valios. She did numerous portraits for the royal family. One of her most elaborate and well-known is her portrait of Philip II, which we can see here. She painted this portrait in 1565 and retouched it in 1573, about eight years later. An x-ray of the canvas shows that while the king's head stayed the same, he originally wore a different cape that was shorter, and his right hand was placed over his chest previously. The portrait was changed in order to be paired with the portrait of his new wife, Anne of Austria. She also added the rosary in his left hand to represent the Feast of the Rosary, commemorating the triumph of the Catholic faith. This portrait is now at Museo del Prado, along with other important paintings by Sofonisba. These paintings include the portrait of Queen Anna of Austria, Pietro Mana, he was a Cremonese doctor, Elizabeth of Valios holding a portrait of Philip II, and Queen Elizabeth of Valios. She was the third wife of Philip II. There is an exhibition this year from last October until February at the Prado Museum in Madrid, presenting the work of Sofonisba and Guisola. And here is a painting that was my favorite of her. It's her self-portrait in old age. There is a lot of skepticism and stereotypes regarding female artists during Sofonisba's life, which she was able to break away from. She achieved fame and recognition during her life and has within the last 30 years been gaining more recognition once again from the public.